listening to The Weekly Spoke, a San Diego Bike Coalition podcast. For commuters, by commuters. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to The Weekly Spoke. My name is Daniel Rodriguez, and today we are finally joined by our co-host, Elizabeth Bowersox. She is uh, back from Oakland from the Cal Bike Summit, and we're excited to introduce her. Um, Elizabeth, you want to talk a little bit about yourself? Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining the Weekly Spoke. I'm very excited to join Daniel as a co-host on this awesome project, bringing news and information and advocacy to you wherever you are listening. Uh, so my name is Elizabeth. I'm a San Diego native. I grew up in Ramona, California. I spent some time in Boulder, Colorado, where I went to school, and that's where I discovered my love of road biking and gravel biking, and I found my way back to San Diego, where I've joined the San Diego County Bicycle Coalition as the new program's director, so it's been an awesome opportunity so far. I've been here for about a month, so we're still getting the lay of the land, but um, we just all got back from the Cal Bike Summit, and that took place in Oakland, California. So I'm super excited to talk to, talk to you guys today about that. Nice. Honestly, I don't think I actually introduced myself the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> but my name is Daniel Rodriguez. I'm the social media coordinator, marketing guy, I guess you could say. Uh, handle all the social media stuff, pictures, photos, videos. Uh, yeah, so it's been pretty cool here working with the Coalition. Born and raised here in San Diego and pretty much just love riding a little bit of everything. Mostly grew up riding road bikes and uh, mountain bikes, but I ventured out to track and, and other uh, cool stuff out there these days. But anyways, yeah, let's just get back into the topic here. We're going to talk a little bit about the Cal Bike Summits. Um, Elizabeth, how, how was it, first of all? I give this event an A+. Uh, this was a huge gathering of important people in the bicycling community, advocates, educators, um, and I was really just amazed at the attitude everybody had, and, and coming out of the pandemic, I mean, we've all been cra- we're craving human connection, and to be able to all come together in one place safely um, was really uh, an experience. Uh, so, yeah, five of our staff members flew up there, and it was a three-day event, um, and it started off with a bike ride, so we got to rent some e-bikes from Rad Power Bikes, and it was actually cool because I've never ridden an e-bike before, and I kind of had this thing, I was like, I'm going to wait as long as I can to ride an e-bike because I know I'm just going to love it, and I'm never going to want to go back um, to just, like, my road bike, um, but that was really cool, um, getting to meet people from, there was a woman from all the way from Arkansas who came from a nonprofit there. Um, she came out to talk. And so this bike ride was really a social, uh, event and, um, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. It it happened to be like the best weather ever in San Francisco this weekend because in SoCal there was a huge heat wave. And up in NorCal, it was, like, the best, because it's always really cold up there. Um, but, yeah, it was it was kind of, uh, it was like putting together a puzzle, because we had to navigate the BART. And for those of you who don't know what BART is, it's the Bay Area Rapid Transit. So it's kind of like the metro, or like the New York subway. Um, and it connects uh, all, all the Bay Area together. Um, But the cool thing about BART is that they have uh, space for bicycles or scooters, um, kind of like priority seating for bicycles, um, which is really cool because it it doesn't like shut you out if you need to take the BART and then ride your bike. And I feel like a lot of people these days do stuff like that. They ride to the bus stop and they put their bike on the bus and then they take the bus and then they get on their bike and they go to work and um, that's the future. you know, like, just especially with gas prices today, there's so many people using public transportation, and that's great. I mean, we've we've all been thinking about it, and it's happening now. Um, but yeah, we were we took the BART. We all had to carry our e-bikes down huge flights of stairs, and it was actually funny. Will our, our advocacy manager Will pushed? He accidentally like put the thr- he like 
twisted the throttle as we were going downstairs <laughs> and like it was almost a disaster um but then we went on this huge guided tour of San Francisco we came out at the Embarcadero um and we rode out uh, to the marina and a few of us went out to the, ba the Golden Gate Bridge and that was a really awesome experience um just getting to see um the bike infrastructure in Northern California, I feel like it's it's a lot different, and I feel like they're a little bit more, they're a few years ahead of us. Um, there's a huge fixie culture up in NorCal, Oakland, and San Francisco, um, and a lot of road bikers and commuters, just like a huge um, melting pot of people riding bicycles, any kind of bicycles. I mean, and there were women with their children, people, it was just, amazing to see how many people were riding bikes and not just driving their cars because that's sometimes really frustrating about living in California is that it's such a car central state um in like LA and San Diego there's all these people in their cars and then with the gas crisis right now it was just really refreshing to to see a lot of bicyclists out there nice no super cool to know I, I do have a lot of friends and I know a lot of groups out there in like San Francisco Oakland and it's pretty much all around the barrier that ride fixed gear and all that stuff mm -hmm. so it's cool that you know, San Francisco is a little more bike friendly than, than other cities, but yeah, hopefully San Diego catches up one of these days. So do you want to talk about like, some of the panels that you maybe you know, like, saw or some of the cool panels you saw? Yeah, yeah. So um, it was a learning experience for everybody. Uh, in this day and age, especially with the pandemic, we all learned how to be virtual and some of the panels in the summit were like hybrids. There were some people in the room speaking and some people on Zoom. It was like a, we had a projector and, and we saw and heard people talk from all around, all, all across the, the country. And um, that was really cool to have people feel included and people could sit in on the panel that weren't even there. Um, but I sat in on panels like uh, international cycling cities talking about other places in the world that have different ideas, um, different infrastructure, especially in Bogota, Colombia, is a huge cycling city, and there were actually a few panels just on Latin America and the work that they've been doing down there. Um, disabilities and cycling, a truly inclusive bike advocacy, and and this was a really eye opening for me because there there are so many people out there that want to ride bikes, need to ride bikes. That's their only mode of transportation. And we heard from low vision cyclists where they can't, they can't drive cars. They don't, they don't have that option. So how can we um, integrate those needs into our society? And we talked a lot about equity and making it equal for all. Everybody has a specific need and how can we share the road? Um, all how do we share the road, all of us, motorists, bicyclists, pedestrians, scooterists, and, and really it just opened my eyes to that issue. It's so important. And I feel like a lot of times just the majority like gets the favor, but, but we, we need to think about those people who, who have those extra needs. Um, and so it was inspiring and, and I feel like I want to do more work and spread the word about it. Um, and also we talked about how the pandemic affected cycling and how some programs, especially education, bike education was affected and how we most, how people came up with strategies on how to, how to make it accessible. Um, but we had, we heard from a lot of really knowledgeable, powerful people and it was really inspiring to to be in the same room as those people um, sharing their passion and sharing what the work that needs to be done, because there is a lot of work that needs to be done. And um, sometimes that's out of our control. Sometimes it isn't. And so I think a summit like this, people are going to we're starting to think about it. OK, here's how can we actually proceed with this and where can we find money to do this? And everyone's just we're going to hit the ground running here. Um, and San Diego County Bike, Bike, Bicycle Coalition, <laughs> the San Diego County Bicycle Coalition is having our summit here in June, and we got a lot of good ideas um, for how we want things to, to go down here, um, and so it was just extremely informative and fun. Um, they had 
events. They had receptions. We did Jeopardy and karaoke. And actually, our very own executive director, Andy Hanshaw, was selected for Jeopardy. Um, and so it, the Jeopardy was like bike uh, topics, bike what is, and, and different laws around bicycling. And um, so, yeah, they made it really fun. And it was it was short and sweet. Um, and we used uh, these facilities, this like campus um, called Oak Stop, and it, it, there's a few different um, rooms that that this uh, company has to to encourage all kinds of groups, all kinds of different other companies to come and use this space. And it was right in downtown Oakland, and everything was really accessible. Um, and they actually closed off the street right in front of the conference and they brought in food trucks and um, that's where we had all the e-bikes set out for the tours uh so that was another really cool thing to see that uh they do this thing called slow streets and they they shut down uh through traffic and it's just open to pedestrians and cyclists and um there was a lot of that in san francisco too and me and andy and will biked like it was like a mile and a half stretch of no cars on this one it's like a, I think it was Lake Street um and yeah that was really inspiring and we're like we want to do that here we want to we want to do that down here um it was it was almost it felt like Disneyland kind of because like you know you go to Disneyland and there's a bunch of people walking but it like looks like a street so it was very like inspiring and really fun it's funny, it's funny they bring up Disneyland because I had a conversation a while back ago with someone and they were talking about like, oh, it's, it's funny how people are willing to walk around Disneyland. Like no one complains about like, oh, I, w- I want to drive around Disneyland. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, we should model some of our towns and cities around like the theme parks where people yeah. park outside and then they, are, mm-hmm. they just walk around. Maybe there's like a train that yeah. takes people around the little city. But yeah, we'll see. A, a little, little far. We'll, next topic next week. We'll see. We'll see. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we talked a little bit about the Cow Bike Summit, some of the panels. Um, I mean, do you want to talk about anyone you possibly met or anything other than that? So we heard from Tokes Omashakin, who is the secretary of the California State Transportation Agency. He joined us on Zoom, um, and he had a lot of really amazing things to say about the work that's being done and the amount of money that the state has to work on transportation projects. Um, we heard from the mayor of Oakland, Libby Schaff, and she was an amazing speaker, and she's a huge advocate of cycling and making cycling accessible for all. Um, and there were other panels. I think our very our very end our end panel, we heard from people specifically from the city of Oakland and how and we had some women and we had people of color um, talking about, just the the different the kinds of treatment that we see towards women, people of color, and other minorities in the cycling community, um, and how they can come together um, and and make their own culture um, and make their own brand and educate people about it, especially children too. Um, there's it's so important too for us to educate our kids because that's the, the kids are the future, children are the future. Um, so. Yeah, every everything I heard from everybody was very positive and uplifting, and we can do we can do this. It's it, we can't do this, um, and with the there's just a, a an issue with transportation, and how can we how can we save the world? Basically, how can we come together and save the world? Because one day is going to be different and we don't really know what that looks like, but, um, how can we make this accessible for everybody? And some people were talking about how cars, uh, function in society and, um, how that, how driving cars is going to be looking different very soon. Um, and I think just people getting on bikes, especially going to work, commuting and all the safety problems, involved in that and how can we navigate some people some people need to drive a car some people can't ride a bicycle some people can't ride a scooter they need to drive a car and and we need to be inclusive and thinking about everybody so um, the wheels are definitely turning 
um, pun intended, <laughs> um, on the work that, that's, that's getting done uh, in the state of California. And yeah, we learned that there is a lot of money um, coming in now from the government um, to start on transportation projects and, and building more infrastructure and um, just initiating this movement. It's a huge movement. It's coming. It's, it's going to be big and it's going to be really fun. So we're really excited about that. Nice. Yeah, I'm definitely excited, especially ever since starting, you know, working at the coalition and learning about everything they have done within the last years and how they've been growing. It's like, oh, I want to be part of that change. You know, I want to help my community and, and you know, hopefully change the world for not just my generation, for, but for a couple generations ahead of us, you know. So, yeah, that's really cool. I'm, I'm glad that you guys went and I'm glad you guys came back. Sound, sound fun. I wish I could go, hopefully next year. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun at the SC Bike Summit, as, uh, as you mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, if you guys haven't learned about the SC Bike Summit, make sure to check out our website, scbikecoalition.org. You can learn a little bit about that. Um, aside from that, do you have anything else to add up on that, Elizabeth? Actually, I, I do. I would like to add something. Um, the very first day, this is the, the day we took the e-bike tour, um, we saw a lot of really innovative infrastructure happening. Um, when we got off the train in Embarcadero, there was uh, this kind of buzz in the city. I mean, the I think Daniel can agree that there's some kind of like magic about Northern California, especially the Bay Area. I mean, it's a hustle, but also people people work hard and they play hard. Um, but when we got off of the Embarcadero, there were there was some Class Four separated bikeways, um, and that took you if you're going north northwest, that took you into the the marina. And the marina is a place where tons of people, it's beautiful. You have this view of the Golden Gate Bridge and the, and the water and Alcatraz. Um, and that's where all the piers are too. And so that class four bikeway turned into a multi-use path. That's a class one, um, huge path. And, and this was walkers and bikers. And something, something I noticed was that there were commuter bikers and like road bikers alike using this path. It wasn't like where the road bikers were just on the road. Cause I feel like I see a lot of times that roads, road cyclists will just take the road. They'll take the lane. That's, that's great. And then the more separated bikeway would be used for commuters or maybe slow, slow moving traffic. Um, but it was really cool to see in San Francisco that like both types or all types were using this huge path. Um, and so there was also an advisory lane, which recently there's been some buzz about this lane in Mira Mesa um but there was that and like when we're on the tour we we got some more uh information on that and we saw it in action we saw drivers and bikers using this lane um and it was really interesting to see how how they were interacting um so yeah it was really inspiring to see what San Francisco and Oakland is doing and hopefully we can bring more of that infrastructure not only to San Diego but to other places in California because time is now. It's getting it's getting really important to be able to mobilize and transport yourself uh, in in multiple ways. Um, so yeah, it was really good stuff. All right, well that concludes uh, this conversation. Um, Thank you, Daniel, so much for having me. I'm going to do the outro because that's what we just decided um, since I'm going to be the co-host now, which is awesome. Um, so thank you guys so much for tuning in on this week's episode of The Weekly Spoke. Uh, make sure to check out our socials. We got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and also, don't forget to check out our San Diego Bike Coalition.org. And we're going to have our bike summit on June 9th and 10th. So make sure to register, visit the website, and I uh, hope you guys stay safe out there. We will see you next time. <laughs>